you have to want to be in the grind like with every bit of you because it's so hard, right? You know, momentum is messy. With all these different projects that I'm working on, all of these balls in the air, things swirling around, I'm often frustrated. Come in that door and whatever you need to do to, to switch to your big dad energy, do it. There is going to be a day when they don't ask to play with you, where they don't want to play with you, where they, they might not even want to like hang around you or talk to you. Okay, welcome, Kevin Ball. Buddy, thanks so much for joining me today on the Ridiculously Human podcast. Yeah, man, thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure, but um, I was actually just admiring your mustache. I haven't actually mentioned that to you yet, but that is, uh, that is some good growth that you have there, bud. That means so much that you say that I'll, I'll tell you man it is uh it has taken me a while so I, I it's funny that you say that I I think growing a mustache is like growing a business because you know it, it's like really ugly at first and and people are like asking you like what are you doing like why are you doing that and you know like you're you're kind of self-conscious about it and, and maybe it's like this thing on the side that you, you're trying to work up because you have this vision of it and, uh, and it just takes a lot of time, but then eventually people start compliment you on your mustache or your business. I love it. But it's always like, it's always like that in the beginning. Hey, it's always like dirty, um, you know, with, with lots of things, business, growing your mustache, like growing your hair is another struggle. Like if you've ever tried to grow your hair long, like, um, I, yeah, I used to have this, I mean, I used to have these beautiful locks, right. Um, and then we were living in Brazil and then just as we were, we were leaving, I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to cut my hair for our trip that we're currently on. And I went to this barber and like he cut it. But, and, and I thought he did like a great job. But then actually the guy completely butchered it. Like he just, oh. he destroyed it, right? <laughs> and ever since then, I've been trying to grow my hair again. I don't know what he did, but like this is like three, four months later now. And only now am I starting to get that sort of length and thickness back. But um, it's been dirty and horrible and messy for a while, but the, the hair on my side. <laughs> yeah, on on all of those fronts, it is it's a it's a process, you know, and it's it's really good. And it just it talks about like how important the you know the the presence um, of a father is in a daughter's life. And obviously. The same same with a mother, but the the book is fo focused on the dad, and um, and she walks she walks the line really well of like you know how um to raise them independent and and strong and capable, but then also um you know as much as they might push back in in later years, they they actually really want you and they they really want that that hug and that that closeness and security and, um, and for you to put those boundaries on them and like, you know, maybe they, they, you know, argue with you about coming home by 11, but, but they want you to stand that ground because that's what makes them feel safe, you know? Um, so I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Yeah. But, and books like that are really actually important. I think, uh, you know, there's so many parenting books out there. You, you almost have to try and pick, say, one, two or three books and then, okay, cool. Base your, your, not your parenting, like your full parenting, but like at least, you know, okay, cool. I'm not going to get like 50,000 different bits of advice. I'm just going to stick with say these three people that really resonate with me. Um, yeah, it, it, I actually read a really book, a really great book, uh, called the conscious parents, uh, or conscious parenting by uh, Dr. Shafali Tarberry. And <clears throat> it was, a, I'm so glad that I read it, but it was like, it was literally one of the, the sort of almost biggest eye openers to me. Like her overarching message is very similar to what we were discussing almost on Twitter yesterday, uh, where the fact that your kid is going to teach you way more than you are actually going to teach your kid. So, yep, and it's like yep. quite a big statement, you know? So you almost have to like really sort of take a step back a lot of the time in terms of, okay, cool. What's going on here? Is my child basically just exposing my shadows and undealt with sort of issues you know um or and and is this me just projecting some some stuff onto them uh i almost try like in all instances to go okay cool is this my issue that i need to sort of maybe look at um is this what my daughter is actually teaching me here you know and often that's the case um but but parents want to think that they are perfect and 
Uh, they are the ones meant to be showing everything. But but the more you open yourself up to, okay, cool, this is a two-way street, the the better it is for everybody. Because I think parenting is the, the greatest opportunity for growth that you'll ever kind of experience in your life. I could not agree more. I, I feel like I think about that almost daily as I'm like trying to teach something or um, I don't know, maybe I'm scolding them about something and I'm like, oh, wait a second. Like, just like you said, is, is this, is this their issue or is this my issue? And most of the time it's my issue, <laughs> you know? And that's a big thing to realize. So, you know, I mean, because we're the older person, we're like, no, I'm right. You know what I mean? Like we just have these weird ways of, of operating. We are almost like our own ego can get in the way of our, our parenting. And it's a, uh, you know, it's not a healthy thing. Um, so it's like, it's like, like the lady says, you have to be a conscious parent and, and it's cool that you are questioning yourself and, and, and just even aware of it, but I don't think, you know, people are, are there's a massive lack of self, self-awareness, I think in, in the world. Um, <clears throat> and the more we're able to sort of self critique in like a, in like a good way, not like this, like I'm a, I'm a terrible person sort of way, you know, but the more you're able to sort of self critique yourself, um, the, the, the better you, the better it is for, for you and for everyone around you. That's for sure. Yeah. So, but you have an extended, uh, bio on X <clears throat> and I love it. So thanks a lot for taking the time. It's actually a really good reminder, uh, even for myself to, to do it. I was Gary Vaynerchuk actually recently, he wrote in his, like one of his latest newsletters about having a sort of, you know, like an elevator pitch about you. Um, and, uh, yeah, that also got me thinking, okay, cool. I must, I must do that. His version is like a video version. So, um, th- thanks a lot for doing that because it really helps with say guest research. Um, one of the, one of the really cool things that, that resonates with me about you, uh, is part of your morning routine. You have these mantras, right? And I always think mantras are like almost one of the most powerful things that, that people can do, like, but, but don't do like probably 99% of people don't have like say morning mantras that they say to themselves. Um, most people wake up in the morning, turn on their phone, get distracted, uh, live their lives through somebody else's life and wonder why they're depressed and sad and, and, and unhappy, you know, and not motivated to, to do things. But I think as soon as you start your day on your terms, uh, it's a, it's a different story. And as soon as you able to almost program your mind with like good thoughts, uh, the, the better, the greater the opportunity is to, for you to have a good day, you know? So you started, uh, yours, uh, from a book apparently called soundtracks and um, there's there's ten of them that you say, and I'll just kind of like start off with a couple of them, um, and then just just sort of you know uh, riff about it a little bit. So today is a today is brand new, and tomorrow is too. I've got a gift worth giving. Uh, the, the only person standing in my way is me, and I quit doing that yesterday. So that's just like you know the start of it. So h- how does that kind of like fit into your your family morning routine? Man, it. It's so funny. I, so I, I, um, I wrote, I, I wrote that bio, uh, several months ago. And so I, I'm like pulling back into like, okay, what did, what did I put in that? And, um, the fact that you brought that up, that's so funny. Cause I, I still, I, every day I still do that with myself and with my girls. And, um, like this morning we're, we're parked outside of my oldest school. And before we walk in, we're still sitting in the car and, and we go through that. And last night, like we're, we're going to bed and, um, and my wife and I, we both know it by heart. And so we're, we're sitting there and and we're doing that. And man, I wish I had a camera because my, my three and a half year old is there laying on the ground and, and she, like, she is saying word for word, the entire thing, like from the start to the finish. And, um, and it's, it's so cool. So, um, there's, I mean, the, the mantra itself covers so much. And I, I wish, I wish it was like mine that I created. Um, but I, I can't take credit for it. It's, it's, yeah, it's from that book, uh, soundtracks and just such an incredible book. Um, the, the challenge in the book, if I recall, and I should probably reread it, but the challenge in the book was doing that for 30 days and, um, morning and night doing that for 30 days. And looking into the mirror, like seeing yourself say those words, hearing yourself say those words, um, and and just letting 
those words soak in. Um, and at first that's what they are. They're, they're just words. And I think that that goes for anything that you're building a habit with or that you're, you're trying to get better at, right? At first, it's kind of just the, the motion of it, you know, um, doing the thing or saying the thing, um, or being there for the thing, whatever it might be. Um, but then things happen through your day and in your life that you, you're, because you know this mantra or you've, you've been working through the process of whatever it is you're, you're trying to grow in. Um, for me, it's like, I've been saying that every day when things happen in real life that might be um, related to one of those 10 items on there. I'm like, I'm not consciously thinking about those, but they, they just come up. Right. So, um, like for example, um, number seven is momentum is messy, right? And so, with all these different projects that I'm working on, all of these balls in the air, things swirling around, um, I, I'm often frustrated with just uh, you know the the process of it, the the slow progress or the um, the messiness of of the build phase. Um, and without like consciously thinking of it, I I'm remembering like, oh yeah, that momentum is messy because that's, that's the truth. So it's, you know, going, um, whether it's a mantra, whether it's your, like you could, you could relate this to your fitness as well. You know, you're, you're just every day doing a little bit of movement, a little bit of fitness, right. Getting better. And then when you need that fitness, when your car breaks down and you've got two kids in the car and the gas station is like a mile down the road or whatever, you know, like you feel confident that you can take those two kids and carry them and, and get down to the gas station. Right. So it's, it's not just the mantra. It could be anything, but when, you know, when your head is down and you're working in it, when you're working, you know, deep in whatever it is, um, you're going to see that pop up in real life and, and your, your mind and your body is just going to be able to get there, you know? Absolutely. <clears throat> it, it is amazing like, that you, you can effectively become, you know, your thoughts and, you know, what you say is a huge part of that. Uh, what you say to yourself on a daily basis. I often think that the pretty much one of the most important things around communication is the internal dialogue that you have with yourself. Because a lot of people, they talk really badly about themselves and just think if you're saying that to yourself every single day, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit fat. I'm a bit slow. I'm not really, you know, that good looking. I'm uh, not really that clever. Like, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. If you are saying that you're actually going to start believing it. And the opposite I think is true too. Like if you're like, cool, you know, I am here to achieve great things. I'm going to share my magic with the world, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Immediately, like, it's like, it's like two different pathways that you, you're sending your, your neurology down, you know? So uh, just do the positive one because honestly, like th there's, there's definitely, you know, people might think that you have it like all together and you have, you know, your life is like amazing and what these things and, and whatnot. But, and, and for some people, uh, that is true because they have these little tools, you know, that's the difference. Like th the difference is they, you wake up and you go and exercise, they wake up and they look at their phone you wake up and you say your mantras, they wake up and they're telling themselves this bad story. And, and that's, I think that's the difference between people that thrive and people that don't is these small little tools. It's nothing sexy. It's nothing fancy, but it takes daily consistent effort to have this sort of, you know, different way of like approaching life. And, and it makes your life much better the one way compared to the other way. Yeah. I mean, like to, to your point, the last several years, has has been really focused on on those two paths that you're talking about my my wife and i have kind of been in this um like agreement like that this like we're we're building things right now and um i i, I say this to paint this picture that you know we we have we have good jobs but we don't have great jobs right like we we live we live middle class and and we're okay right we have we have a house and um, you know, we were able to, to, um, take care of the family on, on a, like 
a, a moderate level, but we have so many more goals above that. And so it was kind of this, this decision of like, how, how do we want to, to grow in the, the prime years of our lives? And, um, I, I'm a police officer by day. I saw the ceiling, um, that I'm just, I'm never going to get past, right? Like it's, it's not a corporate job, but like the structure of it is, is very much like a corporate job, right? You, you just, you can't get past a certain level. Um, and same with her. She has a few different things going on. We're like, how can we break through the ceiling? And so every single day, really, it's a conscious choice for us to, to make that path to, to choose the path of like positive thinking of those mantras of doing doing the tough things, getting up early, staying up late, like grinding to choose that path as opposed to the, ah, I'm just okay with mediocre path, right? Like I'm, you know, um, I'm not that great. I'm never going to be great. My family doesn't have money. Like those sort of thoughts as opposed to, I'm going to work my butt off to get to this point or that point. You know, I'm, I'm going to build a brand. I'm going to buy businesses. I'm going to start businesses you know, we're going to grow things. We, you know, we don't know what it looks like right now. We don't know um, how long we're going to have to be doing it, but we're going to take that path no matter what, you know? Yeah. And I love that. I think uh, that's such like a commendable way of looking at life. And, you know, a lot of corporate life does actually have that ceiling that you, you're speaking about. You know, I used to think, you know, corporate life was the be all and end all. Um, I used to actually work as an investment banker many years ago. And like, I thought, wow, these guys are all like doing so well and so amazing. Um, but I didn't necessarily at the time twig like, okay, cool. There's, there is a proper ceiling to this too, because once you enter the entrepreneurial space and you start like seeing what other guys are doing and what they're achieving and stuff like, you know, the, the, <laughs> there's kind of sometimes almost no limit to being an entrepreneur. You know, it all depends on maybe, uh, well, a lot of to do with, you know, how hard you work, um, that you sort of taking action every single day that you, you're showing up every day. Um, <clears throat> sometimes a little bit of luck, uh, but, but yeah, you, your sort of opportunities are much greater, I believe in this sort of entrepreneurial space, as opposed to w working uh, at a corporate company. Um, and yeah, but both, are, they're definitely not for, every, being an entrepreneur is definitely not for everybody because like you said, it is super messy. Nothing is guaranteed. You eat what you kill. And uh, that's, uh, that's the reality of it. You know, it is a grind. It is a grind for sure. And you need to have that sort of tenacity in you to wake up every day and go, okay, we're going to carry on and carry on going because we need to. And it's, it's funny that you say that because you, you really have to like not even like you have to love the grind, you know, it, you have to want to be in the grind, like with every bit of you, because it's so hard, right? You know, you like the, the work really never stops. Um, and if you don't like the work, if you don't like that grind, um, if that's like exhausting and frustrating and, you know, uh, tiresome or whatever, it's not going to be sustainable. And so it it has to be like passion. You have to be fired up and like, like you said, wake up thinking about it, go to bed thinking about it because there's years in there potentially that you're losing money doing it, you know? Um, and I, yeah, I think about that all the time. I think that's how you really know that you're, you're meant to be an entrepreneur is you look at all that work and all the time spent and you're like, yeah, okay, let's go. You know, there's lots of guys that have written about this in, in various different ways. You know, Seth Godin has a book, I think it's called the dip. Um, mm -hmm. then, uh, Gary V he speaks, uh, he speaks a lot about this in a more sort of like normal way where he says, you know, you will be doing something and you'll be doing it for three years and nothing will happen. And you'll be like, I'm done. I can't, I just can't anymore. You know, like I'm, I'm getting no traction here. I, I'm, I'm not enjoying it say anymore. Uh, I'm done. And then he's like, the problem with that is, is a week later, you were going to strike it lucky. 
and not lucky, but you, you were going to, you know, someone was going to find out about you, something that you produced was going to go viral, a business was going to all of a sudden become a success. And he's like, this is the, this is the mindset that you need to have as an entrepreneur, because that, that's why most people don't make it because they give up too early. He's like, you have to be patient. Like he always says patience. You just have to be so patient because if you are grinding every day, if you are showing up every day, like it, you're bound, to, you're bound to find some success uh, on that road. So, so yeah, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a tough one for people though. It's super tough, man. I don't know if you feel this way. I, I definitely like, I, I feel what you just said, quoting Gary Vee. I feel that like in my bones where I am, I am so in that stage right now, but it's, it's always in the back of my head. I'm like this next thing that I'm doing, that's going to, that's going to be it. Or, you know, somebody is going to see um, or read or whatever, some of the content that I, I put out or this, this business, this is the the best idea that I've ever had, right? Like it, it's that eternal optimist, you know, where it's like, okay, everything up until this point has just been a stepping stone to this, what I'm doing right now, you know? And, and like, you have to, like, you have to take each and every project almost with that attitude because that next week, like that, that could be it. That could, you know, totally be it, you know? And you also have to always think about the alternative. I think, you know, like, okay, the alternative is, is that I need to be waking up at, you know, 7 a.m. every single morning, whatever time people wake up, you know, like, um, and uh, going to work, getting in my car, uh, grinding away for somebody else, getting told what to do all the time, uh, not having control over my or autonomy over my time. That's the alternative, you know. So, like, and and I mean, lots of people do 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 have that, and 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 I'm not I'm not slating corporate work because I think it's like a, a key element of um, society and. It's really important. And actually there's a lot of like great things about it. But <clears throat> once you experience autonomy in your life, in other ways, you realize, okay, cool. This is actually really what living is about. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting stuff. I was wondering, you have like this super high energy, okay, which is, is not common. And uh, you've written recently about how you're going to sort of documents the sort of way you're closing out the year, you know, with, uh, you know, your rocket fuel kind of like energy and, and all the, the list, you listed like a few things that you are, you know, that you're going to be doing, um, you know, like ad adventure trips with your family and daily non-negotiables and date nights with your wife, etc. So I just want to find out like, where does your desire for self-improvement come from? Like, was there a point in your life or something that happened where you're like, okay, okay, now I want to really improve myself. I really want to sort of change how things are. This is a really good question. And um, I, I thought you were going to go another direction with that question, but I really appreciate the angle that you took on it. Um, and I, I, I think I'm going to have to do some, some deep like introspection and I'll, I'll have to come back, I think, on on like a full answer on that. Um, but you're right. I every like everything that I'm doing um, does have like so much energy to it, and and it would make sense that there's like a um, a catalyst or like an origin to all of this. Um, but I, I honestly, I can't pinpoint anything other than the fact that I, I feel like I've always kind of been this way. Um, not, not as a, um, not like in an obsessive way, but in a, um, I know I can be better way. And, and again, like you could look at that and it could be taken in a negative light, but that's, that's, that's not it. It's, it's like. I, um, I have a desire to do more, um, and to, to improve. Um, and so I live my day or my, you know, yearly quarter or my year, you right. So, you know, I kind of break things up in different segments and I, and I live these segments just in like how, 
like how in, in this segment of the year, can I improve myself? Can I improve the businesses that we have? Can, um, can I be a better dad, a better husband? Um, and I wish I had like a more profound answer on like where that came from. Um, but I, um, I don't know. And I I hope this doesn't get taken as like morbid in any way, but we're not here for a long time, you know? Um, And, and I like, again, I I don't want this to take a spin to like a dark side by any means, but I I'm also in a job where um, I may not come home, you know, like that's, I don't think about that every day, but like, that's the reality. And, and there's, there's a climate right now where, Law, law enforcement officers are not like the most favored people um, should have been a firefighter, but I, I, I went the cop route. Um, and, and so I, I, it's not always swirling in my head, but the reality is that I, I may not come home. And so it's, it's like, how can I, in this short time that we have do the very most that I can to, to be the best possible version. Um, and I, I know, I know I'm going off on, on a tangent. Um, so I apologize on this, but then there's, there's one more thing that I think about is, um, David Goggins. I, I, I had had this kind of concept and feeling before I I heard it, but the words that he used descri- um, described that feeling really well. Right. So at the very end of can't hurt me, David Goggins in like the afterward. Um, and this, it might just be in the audiobook actually, but he, he talks about how when he, when he gets, when he gets up there and he's talking to the big man and, and he's standing at the gates. Um, he believes that there's, um, uh, like a, a book that shows the, the potential life that we could live, you know? Um, and, and he, and he wants the life that he's lived to be as close to that greatest potential life that was possible for him, you know? And so he, I mean, he is a man of, of many crazy accomplishments. Um, and so he's, he's doing that really well. And I'm I'm no David Goggins, like not even close, but I, I love that idea of trying to live your present life in a way that you know when your time has come, like you have you have lived your full potential, you know? Absolutely. There's some really cool things in there that I think are actually super important. So uh, uh <clears throat> I think a lot of people are actually wired uh in one of two ways right? To either this sort of like positive go-getting sort of, I'm going to take on the world type of person. And that's like intrinsic to maybe even your DNA. Um, or you're a person that like, you know, you, you judge people and you make excuses and it's always somebody else's fault. There, there's like no accountability. And like, so there doesn't have to be maybe this big sort of inflection point when it comes to sort of personal growth necessarily for for me, I'm the same as you, you know, like <clears throat> I'm just this normal bloke that has always been motivated to, to, to do well, like really at the end of the day, you know, like if it's, a, if it's when I was playing, when, if I was playing sports as a youngster or I was uh, trying to be a good friend or I don't know, just, just everything. Like I always want to sort of try and get the most out of life basically, you know, and, and the other thing that you said there, which is really important, I think is that, you know, we are all dying like there's no more true statement than that. Uh, unfortunately, that is the reality of life. And some of us are dying faster than others, right? <clears throat> and life is extremely short. Like it just is so short. You, you absolutely have to really make the most of your time because, you know, you, I mean, we all know, we look back on our lives and you're like, my goodness, that was five years ago. Oh, that was 10 years ago. It's like, it just goes so quickly. So, and what have I done with my time? Have I done anything meaningful? You know what I mean? Have I, um, you know, have I lived a good life? Have I been happy, et cetera? Uh, these are constant, like, uh, good ways to calibrate. We must always be looking at our lives. And, and it comes, I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, different mindsets. Most, a lot of 
uh, some people are growth mindset uh, or, and some are, uh, have a fixed mindset. And, um, you know, having those different type of mindsets will once again determine the path that you go down. So, yeah, I think that's, it's really relevant, you know, like uh, you, you um, to, to just for people to understand, you know, that um, we are just kind of these normal human beings um, all with the same opportunities. It's just, okay, what decisions am I going to make? How am I going to live my life? Um, and the choice is totally yours. Like it really is yours. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So go for it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, that, um, that same way to live your life, it, it bleeds into everything. I think about it with, I, I often think about this with parenting, you know, where, you know, you get home or, you know, you've had a long day and you're tired and, and your kids want to play like, you know, like they haven't seen you all day or, you know, they, they just want to be with you. Um, and there's that first thought of like, ah, man, I'm tired. Not right now. You know, but then, then the second thought that comes in really quick is like, there is going to be a day when they don't ask to play with you, where they don't want to play with you, where they, they might not even want to like hang around you or talk to you. And like that day is going to come really quick. And so this time, this moment, you might not want to, but it's going to pass and, and it's not going to come back, you know? Um, and it's, it's just like living in those moments or cherishing those moments with the kids, with other things that you do in life. It's, it's so important. I heard another kind of example of that. There was somebody, I don't know where, where I heard it, but like, they were like, there was a time in your life where you and your high school buddies, that was the last time you would ever congregate as that group of friends. And you didn't know it at the time. And I'm like, Oh man, that's so true. There's like, and there's, there's those sort of sliding door moments or not even sliding door moments, but like just moments that are continuously happening in your life, you know? So, so yeah, rather just try and make the most of it uh, and, and be present in, in whatever you're doing than say distracted and, and I don't know, worrying about something else or, or, you know what I mean? Like really be conscious of the time that you are spending in that moment. Um, and, 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 you know, think about it cheapest. Is this, is this the last time I'm going to be, you know, in this country or in, uh, this situation with these people? And if it is, then yes, I want to make the most of it. <laughs> so you have to, it, it, I think it's just, yeah, you know, it's like, I think it's important to always just keep on recalibrating on big and small time sort of, uh, ranges in your life. Um, so You've spoken now about your, your kids. You've got uh, number three on the way. Like, how excited are you? Man, I'm, I'm so pumped. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we're 10 days out. We are, we are in the final countdown. Um, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, we, we have two girls right now, and our third is going to be a boy. And um, everyone, everyone's like, oh, man, aren't you so glad you got your boy? Like, finally got your boy. And, like. I mean, to be totally honest, I was fully expecting and ready for a girl. Like we had a two girls. I'm like, I know girls. I'm a girl dad. I got the girl dad gear. I identify as a girl dad. Um, you know, I, and I mean, I am, I am stoked because I, I'm an only child. And so that's, that's the name right there, you know, that he'll be able to carry on. Um, but like, it didn't even it didn't even like cross my mind. I'm like, you know what, if we have a third girl, man, I am so in for a third girl. And, um, it, so truly it's like boy or girl. I mean, he's going to be a boy, but we just, we're just excited to have a third, you know, to, to grow the family. And have you got any like advice for fathers out there that has helped you being a, a good father? Yeah. You know, I, I, I am still figuring it out. You know, I'm, I'm, I still have so much to work on. Um, I think the, the heavy hitters, right. The, the main things that that's always swirling, um, is how, how fast time goes. Right. So I'm, I'm probably more conscious of that than I, than I would, than I would like, because like that kind of makes me sad. You know, I, I think about that often, but 
because I think about how fast time goes, um, it makes me more present and conscious in the moment. Um, just like this moment right now, I'm, I'm watching my, my oldest, she just spilled a drink and now she's, she's grabbing a, a towel and wiping it down. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that about, I, I think about just being really present in the moment um, because of like how often I'm thinking how fast time goes by. Um, so that's a big one. Um, but that's also cliche. Um, I would say one that you don't hear that often um, is having big dad energy. Um, and it, so I, I've, I've seen this a couple times on Twitter and I, I can't, I can't take it as a, as my own by, by any means, but what I love about this. And so I'll, I'll explain big dad energy um, is similar to what we were talking about before you're gone all day. You're if, if that's your job away from the house or, you know, you're, you're working during the day and, and there's, there's a time that like you need to be focused on that work, whenever that work is that ends and you're in your home um, and, and present come in that door and whatever you need to do to to switch to your big dad energy do it so for me i'm i'm gone tuesday through friday um during the day and i come home and i'm in my driveway i i back my car up before i open the garage i turn off my car and i sit there just for like a minute or two and i i'm i'm going through some things in my head of like okay kind of closing check boxes off um and then i like whatever i need to do like if if i need to um like talk to myself for a second or if i just need to close my eyes and like envision coming in the door i i do what i can to to flip the switch and when i come in the door i have i have my big dad energy or or like the best i can right um and so what that looks like is i i drop my bags at the door they're usually like downstairs they're eating dinner or they're like kind of in the living room and um and they're still at that age where they run to me right and so you know i I drop my bags. I I pick them up as they as they run to me, and I swing them around right. And so I have that big dad energy, and I and I come in strong. Um, and so you you don't hear that that often, but I would say that's that's one of the best tips that I've ever gotten from other dads that are wiser and older and smarter than I am is to to come in the door every day with that big dad energy because like they love it and they need it and they, they want you and they, they want that big dad energy. And so you got to give it to them. That's a great one. I love it. I think, uh, yeah, just being that little bit intentional, you know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. <clears throat> Finish work, sit in your car, gather yourself for like a, a, few, a couple minutes and then like, cool, dad's going to flip and uh, set the tone for when he gets home. Uh, because that, that can also, I guess, change the almost trajectory of a night, you know, you, yeah, you basically, if you could come through that door and you're like slouched and you're like, oh, I've had a terrible day, like <laughs> there's not going to make the kids want to really come and run up to you, is it? You know, so you, yeah, and, and switching the, the sort of uh, flip, uh, flipping the switch, like, yeah, and just going, okay, cool, this is me. I'm going to go and I'm, we're going to have big hugs and flipping high energy. Like what a, what a great reminder. So I really appreciate that, but it's uh, it's good for everyone to realize, you know, and and, and not even just, I guess as a, uh, as, as a dad, but like as a person in general, just like be conscious of the way that you are showing up. You know, <clears throat> I had this really interesting guy on my podcast ages ago, and he always says that the uh, people, people rise to the highest energy, right? So if you're in a room, you automatically, like your nervous system will rise to the sort of highest energy. Um, and, uh, and, you know, you can, you can sense that on people. You can sense somebody that's like, cool, they're confident, they've got their shoulders back, their chest out, um, they've got a smile on their face. Like, okay, I want to go talk to that guy or that girl, you know what I mean? I don't want to talk to the other guy who's like slouching and, and like, you know, looks half depressed and stuff. So so just, you know, the more you can be conscious of that, the flipping, just the better it is for you and the better it is for everyone around you. So so thanks again for that reminder. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. People rise to the highest energy. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I really liked it as well. Um, what I really dig about uh, you and your story, and you know, we kind of touched on this a little bit even before we started speaking. <coughs> Excuse me, 
was, you know, you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like still figuring this out myself. I don't necessarily maybe think I'm the guy to, I don't know, uh, be sort of this, uh, inspiration for, for other people, but, but that's actually almost the total opposite impression that I have of you, to, to be honest with you. I think you are that guy, like because of, um, what you do, because of how you share your process, um, because of what you talk about. So th- that's really what attracted me to you was the type of person that, that you are, right? So, so please never underestimate the, the influence that you're having on people um, or, you know, yeah. So don't, don't, don't think that for one second. Uh, you, you're a, I mean, like you said, you're a cop full-time, uh, which, is, which is pretty crazy in America right now um, and all around the world, I guess. And, you know, you're also an entrepreneur pretty much like the rest of the, your waking moments, uh, as well as trying to be like this awesome dad and husband and stuff. So you, you have a ton going on. And that's, to me, like that says a hell of a lot about you as a person, right? But there was something even more cool that I, that I really liked about uh, your story was what you, you wrote about, you used to, I think, have a CrossFit gym. And there was a couple of people at your CrossFit gym that were deaf, so you decided to learn uh, sign language and like that to me is just like a beautiful, like that says a lot about you as a person, like you, you like got a, you got a big heart, you know, and, the, but, but then that really followed on to what you currently do, you know, as, as a cop and you're able to speak to so many deaf people because you speak sign language. Can you just maybe speak a little bit about that sort of story there? Man, first of all, I like I can't even thank you enough for those kind words. Like I I really appreciate everything that you just said. That that means a lot and um for anyone out there that's listening that's also like really in the grind um because I in the trenches like that's that's where I feel I am right now. Um it's it's so cool to be seen um, and to be heard. And, um, so I, like, I'm, I'm blown away by, by you saying those things. And, um, that, that means a lot. I, I really, I really appreciate it. Um, man. Yeah. I, as you can tell, I'm, I'm chatty and I, uh, I, I love talking, not like not to hear myself talk. Like that's, that's not the, that's not the point. I, I love talking to people and, you know, that's why I, um, I've loved being on Twitter and, and all these different interactions. And I, I launched the podcast cause I want to, I want to talk to people and learn their story. Um, and so that, that's always been something um, that's been really important to me because um, everybody has a story to tell every, everybody needs to be heard, right? Because the other half of talking is listening. Um, and when, when, you have um when you're not able to speak right when when you're when you're deaf and the rest of the world is able to talk and and you have to communicate a different way where most people don't understand what you're saying um like that's i can't even imagine you know like that's um that takes that takes away not only your ability to talk but other people's ability to listen to you. Right. And so then, then you're kind of isolated into um, the deaf community, which the deaf community is a really tight community. Um, And, and so like they, they stay very close knit and tight. Um, But then like, that's, that's it. And so there was this couple that came in um, to a, a gym that my wife and I used to run and, um, and, and they're deaf. They, like they were totally up for it. Right. Like they, um, they were down with none of us knowing any sign language or anything like that. Like that they knew that that's what they were signing up for because generally people don't speak American sign language or don't sign. Um, but several months went by where I'm just like, we keep like, we can't keep going with this. Right. It, it, there's only so much that I can teach them by drawing on a whiteboard or by like kind of gesturing. And so, um, bit by bit, man, just over the years that I, that I coached them. Um, I probably coached them for a good few years at, if not more at that gym. I, I just, I started watching YouTube videos. I, I downloaded 
an app. I, I got a, um, like an ASL book and just like, like bit by bit started plugging away and, and it became such a fun skill. I'm like, Oh, I love this. I can, I can talk to them. Right. Like I, I felt like I, I really got to know them and, um, and, you know, listen to them and talk to them on, on another level. Uh, when, when I left coaching and I went into law enforcement, I, I still wanted to maintain that because you just, you never, you never know, right. You, you never know. And I, I loved having that skill. Um, and sure enough, like I, I've now been able to use it for, for years as a police officer and to, like, just to give, um, uh, like context when, when there's a, an urgent, like fast moving situation, um, and police officers show up and somebody's not, um, listening to commands or, um, they're like acting erratic or whatever, like things, things escalate really quickly. You know, like you don't, you don't want them to, and we're, we're trained to deescalate, deescalate. Um, but it's just the nature of like situations like that. And if, if you can imagine showing up at a, at a scene and that sort of thing happening, and you're trying to talk to somebody and they're not listening and you know, they're, they're maybe like, um, like waving their arms or um, like making crazy noises and you're like, Oh, this guy's on drugs or, or whatever, you know? Um, well, if, if you look at it just a little different, right. Um, or, you know, if, if you, you look closely, it's because they, they don't hear you, right. That, that person that's acting erratically or whatever. And I'm, I'm telling you this, like, this is an actual situation that has happened where like they weren't, they weren't hearing the officers that were on scene. They were waving their arms because they were signing. They were um, making crazy noises because like they can't, they can't talk. Right. And so um, situations like that, they don't happen all the time, but they do happen. Um, and the ability to be able to, to, to talk to them and to sign to them has um, allowed for us to deescalate something like that. They, they could end up, um, you know, way worse, right? I, I literally feel like <clears throat> you you saving lives effectively because when you get into that situation and maybe you have a deaf person and they're like, they maybe almost they're trying to explain to you that they're deaf, you know, uh, but but you take it the wrong way as a cop and you're like, no, put your hands down. I'm telling you, put your hands down, you know, and and they just actually like they're like, mm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm, I don't speak, you know. Um, the fact that you are able to just, okay, go, okay, cool. And then you're like, do, do sign language. Like you, I don't even think maybe you realize how many lives you could have potentially saved, you know, because in America, especially there seems to be, you know, the case of m much more sort of, um, shootings and stuff than, than in, in other places. So being able to, yeah, identify, okay, cool. Wait, wait, hang on a second. Let me speak to this person. They're just trying to do sign language with us. Like you, you, you've saved lives, but like, that's, that's an incredible, incredible feat, man. They, uh, it's, it's weird to like hear you say that out loud. Um, but I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. So the other really cool thing, like I said about you is that you are this real go-getter and, um, you know, working your, your job as a cop is not, uh, is not enough for you. You and your wife, you've already spoken about it on this, like, you know, this growth phase, and um, the, you, you, you've got some storage unit businesses, which I always think is like such a great uh, business to sort of get into. It, it seems, I mean, it seems to be semi-low sort of touch. I'm not saying it is at all because it's, it's, I'm sure it's not. But can you maybe just talk a little bit about like, why did you choose to get into storage business, in storage businesses? Yeah, um, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I would say the normal path for people is they are in uh, residential real estate and they have a few homes. Maybe they have a duplex or a fourplex or something like that. And, and they're like, man, I'm like so over tenants, termites and toilets. And there, there has to be a better way. And so they're like, okay, what's this better way? How can, how can I, how can I do something where, you know, I'm building a real estate portfolio, but I don't have like all of those aches and pains of 
you know, managing those properties. And so then, then they eventually, they, they kind of stumble their way, you know, tired and worn out into some sort of commercial real estate. Um, and you know, the, the storage guy kind of waves them in and come join us. Right. And, uh, and so that's normally what happens. Um, but I, I, I saw that, um, I dabbled in, in residential, like wholesale a little bit. Um, and so I, I, I saw that, that path and I'm like, oh, I, I kind of want to skip that, um, that whole process and just go to storage. And so, um, three, four years ago now, um, would be where I would say my entry into storage was, um, be, because you're, um, it's the best of both worlds. You're buying a real estate asset and then a small business essentially, you know? And so you have the, um, yeah, the best of both worlds. And so I, I went into it just having seen kind of all this stuff with residential and, um, not wanting to, to go through that myself, just skip the line a little. And what have been like sort of maybe your greatest lessons and, and maybe, maybe you can tie into that. Like I'm a lot of lessons are results of things not going right. So maybe you can tie in those two things together. First, I would say if you can find a good facility, if you can find a good deal, I promise you the, the money, the investors, whatever you need to close that deal, that will come. If you can, if you can get a good deal under contract, if you can find those good off market deals, you'll, you'll find somebody that wants to invest with you. And so if you don't have capital, if you don't have, um, you know, people that you know in the industry, if you're super new into storage, get really good at finding those facilities, um, build a team if you can of maybe VAs or whoever, a partner to, to work with you on, on just kind of building a, a lead gen machine and, and find those deals because people, people will bring their, their money into that after that. So that would be the first thing. Um, but now let's say, cool, you've checked that box. You found the facility. You've closed on the facility. You have that. You're good to go. You're in the storage game. Now what? Become a good operator. And I, I so badly wish the answer would be, no, just go on to number two and number three. But when, when you get that first facility, you have to kind of slow down for a little bit. It might be a year. It might be a little bit more. You need to kind of dial yourself back especially at that point you you might not have the capability to to send your lead gen team off and go hey cool find me more facilities i'm going to i'm going to be grinding on this one it's it's kind of you and your buddies or you know whoever whoever you have with you on your team it's like you guys are doing it all um especially on that first one right so you find that first one now you have to become a good operator and so what what does that look like that looks like having a, a really good boots on the ground. Um, and the, the way I'm, I'm talking about all these is operating them remotely. Because if, if you're buying that facility down the street from you, that's, that's awesome, like good for you, but then you've kind of bought yourself a job. And so the, you know, the next phase, if, if you do that, if you buy that next door facility is how can you pull yourself out of it? Right? So all of this that I'm talking about is operating remotely. So you have your, your facility in another state or another area than where you live, you need to find a good boots on the ground. Um, to do that, um, you, you know, you might have to go through a few. We've gone through a few. And in fact, like we just had to let one go because we were having some issues. We're bringing on another. So what we've learned with that is, um, is connect early, as early on as you can with local PD. Um, and that seems kind of weird, but like, just get on the, the police department's radar and let them know like, Hey, you're out of state. You just bought this facility. Um, you know, whenever you guys can, um, you know, would appreciate some patrol checks, uh, you know, give, even give them like a, a universal access, um, code for your gate. Right. So that, uh, first responders can get in there. Um, you know, maybe maybe if the the pd needs like a unit or two 
to to store some gear or, or whatever like whatever whatever you can do to like connect with local pd so that they like they know that you own that facility and it's on 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 their radar do that right so have that connection and then as far as finding that boots on the ground i would recommend going internal right go through your rent roll find those people that have been um like current on their payments always that have been there for a good amount of time uh that that live nearby um that that maybe like have even called in about things like hey there's a, an open door that shouldn't be open or whatever right like find those people internally and go after them first um and then after that if like if you can't find anybody internally do like an indeed post um and and just kind of start going through the line and we and we we learned that later right we did the indeed post first and we went out um and then we've had to let two of them go on this last facility that we got. Um, and, and now we just went internal and, um, and it's been working out great. That's really great advice. Really interesting. Uh, it's a really interesting business, um, to get into. I mean, I think America, especially like, yeah, there's, there's so many people that have excess stuff. So, you know, facilities like that are, are quite common, aren't they? Um, really cool. So what's, if you, if you have like some, other advice for like any other entrepreneur, right? Like what would be your sort of number one or, num- or number two thing? Like anyone that's looking to become an entrepreneur. I'm like, I'm, I'm, proce- I'm processing this. This is a good one. Cause there, you know, of course I have, I have a million things going through my head and, um, and I want to like fire hose information. Um, but anybody that is wanting to enter into entrepreneurship the 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 number one thing i would say would be stay in the fight um and what i mean by that is what we were talking about earlier with no going in that it it's it's not going to it it it's probably not going to be your first idea it's it's probably not going to be your second or your 10th um and now like okay cool like you've developed an idea into a business right you have the LLC and you have the bank account and, and it's a business. It's probably not going to be that first business or that second business. Maybe not even that third business that, that gets you to, you know, wherever it is you want to be, because, you know, you, you enter into entrepreneurship because you, you realize that there's a ceiling above you in your corporate job or whatever job. And you're like, I need to break through the ceiling. And so, you know, you see that entrepreneurship, just like we were saying earlier is, this this path where it's almost um you know infinite right the 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 distance that you can go and you're like yes i'm all in i'm you know i'm bleeding entrepreneurship and so you probably have a vision of where you want to be just know that these you know the first however many you know 10 20 100 ideas you know 1 2 10 businesses whatever these these first ideas and businesses that you run with, they're probably not going to get you there. But, but here's the caveat. All of those, each, each idea, each business, everything that you've worked on together, like that is what's getting you there. And, and it, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm painting this, this image properly, but if you look at each individual idea or business and you're like, dang it, that wasn't the one. I'm not there yet. I'm so frustrated. If if you look at it that way, you're, you're going to be really frustrated. But I'm I'm telling you right now because I'm in this. I am I am like I am living this right now. All of those combined, it's the totality of those ideas and those businesses and the lessons and the the people that you talk to and the podcasts that you go on and the content that you write it is the the cumulative the totality of all of that that is what will make you that's that's what will get you there right and so if if you can go through your days realizing that knowing that like believe that you're going to be a happy camper because it like you you just know that one day it's going to happen you're pulling the slingshot back keep pulling it back. And at one point when you let go, 
you're going to take off, you know? The lessons are like between the lines. They're not, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they're not always like super obvious, but the more you sort of go through a process and start doing things, the, the lessons like, you know, start showing up in, in not, not necessarily <clears throat> subtle ways, but they are all adding to your kind of like armory, okay, of like how to handle this uh, going forward. So absolutely, um, totally agree. I was just wondering, uh, Kevin, as we, as we sort of start finishing up now, what are you most excited about uh, for the future, for, for yourself, um, for your business, for life? I really want to be there in, in quotations, right? Where, wherever, wherever there is, like, I, I want to be there. And I, I think um, there for me means um, I've, I'm comfortable enough that I can, I can leave law enforcement that um, I can be full-time entrepreneurship without like burning, burning my boats and um, having to, to worry about uh, paying mortgage or whatever. Right. So, you know, leaving, leaving my, my day job and going full-time into the, into that, um, you know, um, being able to, to take care of the family on, um, a different level financially to, to have, uh, freedom of time, um, to, to be able to work when we travel. Um, and so to be able to go anywhere, right. Um, and to, to live that life. Right. So, you know, I, I have, I have landmarks of what there means to me. Um, but what I'm, what I'm most excited about is this last year, more than any other year in the past. Um, I, I have been so satisfied with the process of getting there. Um, I, I've wanted to be there for, for years and I still do. Of course I do. Right. That's like, that's the fire. But this year, for some reason, like as I'm closing out the year and I'm, and I'm writing my, my novel of an end of the year review, um, I, I've realized that I, I'm so happy with the process of, of doing all these things, um, regardless of the fact that I'm, I'm not there yet. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of excitement for me in, um, in finding beauty in the progress um, and, um, and in the growth. And so there's, there's growth in the businesses that we have. Um, you, you know, even though it's small, there's, there's growth that, I, that I've seen and that I'm happy with. There's growth in our family. We're adding another one. Uh, um, I, I feel like I've grown in my health and in my fitness. Um, and so the, the theme, the happiness that, that I'm, I'm really feeling what I'm most excited about is that um, I'm, I'm learning to really enjoy, um, the journey. I'm, I'm, I'm learning to enjoy the journey instead of the destination. And it's that like, everyone says that. And it, like, I think I even said that before I felt it, but, but I, I truly am enjoying the journey. And so I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great thing. Like <clears throat> if you, if you're not excited about the journey, if your vision is only on the end goal, you just miss out on so much, you know, and actually you, you start worrying more and uh, yeah, all these sort of things that are, that are not nice kind of emotions to feel. So you literally have to go, okay, cool. How am I going to enjoy this moment? How am I going to enjoy this tough conversation? How am I going to enjoy this interaction? How am I going to try and enjoy this uh, difficult task that I have to do? Like, you know, like seek joy, seriously, like, uh, you know, I'm not saying that life is all joyful, you know, uh, a lot of life is, is tough and all these sort of things, but, but actually the, the more you can try and learn in the moments, the more you can try and, um, see like the, the good in the moments, the, the, just the better your life is. It comes back to, I guess, a lot of what we've been talking about. So, um, <clears throat> that's, that's, that's great advice. Not just, uh, yeah not just for, for anyone that's pursuing a, a big goal or a business, but just, just the way to, to look at your own life in, in general. I was also, just my last question is like, what does being ridiculously human mean to you? That's a really good question. And it's, I, I was actually, I was thinking about this when you were just talking and I want to kind of key in on, on one phrase that you said, you said, seek joy. And so to me, 
being ridiculously human is the 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 fight really to be seeking that joy because there it's so easy it's so easy in life to to be brought down by everything that's going on on like a on a daily on a minute basis really and so to be ridiculously human is that battle to constantly intentionally consciously be seeking that joy in those moments. That's beautiful, bro. That's beautiful, brother. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> and and it's so true. Hey, like it comes back just again to the, all the stuff. I guess we've been saying, you know, like you just um, you've got to just enjoy the moments and enjoy the journey uh, because everything is just so short. Like life is literally just so short. So I also just wanted to say thanks uh, so much for coming on the podcast. Like you are like a like a really cool bloke, seriously. Um, you, you're very inspiring. I love just the way that you share everything that you're doing. I think there's, there's nothing more sort of genuine and authentic than that. Uh, that's definitely what attracts me to people and attracted me to like, to you. And, um, you know, you, you never know like who's watching and you never know what you're teaching, like the, the, the influence that it's having, you know, uh, you know, even just doing the research for for this podcast, you know, you taught me a, a few things. Um, I was looking at how to add a newsletter to my X profile. I still haven't got it yet because there's some issue with the image that I know you spoke about as well. So I've got to get that right. But then, you know, like just a remind, certain things are reminders, like, you know, your daily mantras, um, why, it's, why it's important to sort of, you know, bring good energy and, and close your year out well. So Seriously, more people watch and don't say things than you ever have any clue about. So keep doing that because you're having a positive influence in the world and you're being a light. So I really appreciate it, bud. And I'm just super happy that we have uh, have crossed paths and just wish you an amazing rest of the day. Man, I'm, I'm blown away. This, this has been incredible. I, I can't thank you enough, truly. Ah, cheers, bud.